And now, Silver Quill reacts without context to My Little Pony the movie. Be warned, there are kind of spoilers in here. Woo! Blade Runner! Yes, I'm going to see Blade Runner! Woo! Blade Runner! So excited for the Blade Runner! One for My Little Pony, please. Woo! Blade Runner! All right, let's start this Hanazuki? What the heck is Hanazuki? Oh, oh, I, I get it. Hour and a half movie, got a short, got to pad the time. Yeah, okay, I get it. Okay, actually, I'm kind of grateful for this short because it is putting me in the mindset of a non-MLP fan. I have no idea who these characters are. I have no idea of their relationships or how this world works. It's all new, and therefore, it's a little hard to get invested. I mean, the colors are beautiful, the animation is great, and I can follow the plot along pretty easily. I'm just wondering, what's the hook in all this? So thank you, Short, for generating some empathy with non-fans, but can we cut to the real movie, please? All right, here we go, and we start with a cover of They've Got the Beat. Thank you, Random Exposition Ponies, you're a credit to your race. Okay, before we get into the real meat of this, let's play a game of Spot the Ponies. Hi Lyra, hi Bon Bon, hi Rara, hi Caramel, hi High Winds, hi Gusty Breeze, hi Daisy, hi Spitfire, Soren, Thunderlane, Starlight, Trixie, Apple Bloom. For any non bronies watching this, I swear I'm not making these names up. Scootaloo, Big Macintosh, Granny Smith, Cheese Sandwich, Hoity Toity, Fashion Play, Tree Hugger, Bulk Biceps, Pound Cake, Pumpkin Cake, Mrs. Cake, Party Favor, Night Glider, Muffin Mare. <laughs> Greetings Twilight and all your movie animated glory. I appreciate that you're doing a freak out in the first three minutes. Luna, digging the new bling. Okay, but aren't you moving the sun and moon anyway? I mean, is there any harm in just altering the path just slightly? Okay, ladies, I'm just saying that Gloriosa Daisy tried that line and it didn't go well for her either. Spike, stop eating the stage. All right, this song is a pretty effective way to get non-fans to at least know these characters in some regard. You see each of them doing their own little thing and showing just a little bit of their personalities, somewhat like the introduction in the first Friendship is Magic. You know, with all the ponies I'm seeing, I feel like there's something missing. Oh, no time for that. We've got our villains. Let's all pause to remember. Brian. Okay, Grubber, you just committed a major faux pas. You never admit that the villain is evil. Because once you say this character is evil, you've removed any ambiguity. When I think about most of the villains in Friendship is Magic, how many of them actually said, I'm evil? They were selfish or aggressive, but from their perspective, they were doing what was right for them. Believe me, I say this as a child of the 80s. It's not a good idea to really list the main antagonist as evil. Presenting our lead antagonist for this movie, Edgy McEdgerton. No, sorry, Tempest. Okay, Luna, never cite numbers. You're just setting the villain up for a gotcha. Huh, Equestria needs an early warning system. Oh, wait, now I know what's missing. Guard ponies. There's not a single guard pony on screen. What the hey? Okay, shining armor, your wife just got petrified. You just lost another princess. Okay, that, that's three princesses. Shining armor, have you invested in a good sofa? I'm pretty sure you're gonna be sleeping on it for the rest of eternity. Though I will say, Tempest has some mad parkour skills. Oh my gosh, the unsung hero of Equestria. What kind of movie would we have if not for her sacrifice? So the whole of Canterlot got conquered in like two minutes? Dang. I mean, come on, if we'd had some guard ponies, I'm sure they would've lasted three. You know, I made the assertion that Celestia has created a world where if one group of ponies fails, another will step up now, given how quickly Cantalot fell and the pony race seems to be on the uh, backpedal, it may seem like that doesn't follow through, but I want to stress, what kind of movie would we have if Twilight had been petrified as well? One mare, who is not a member of the main six, changed the course of history just by putting forth her best. Hang on to that. One person can always make a difference. Okay, that was pretty clever, but can you do a clue reference? The entire pony race has been enslaved. Well, that's a downer. Actually, there's a question. If you have all this grand magical power, why not spend it on parties? I mean, what else are you going to do? Conquer everyone around you? They wouldn't quite be the ponies if they did anything else. How do you set a ringtone for that? The power of a hundred armies? Tempest, you do realize how fast you steamrolled these princesses, right? Well, I always figured Pinky would be the first one to crack, though I secretly suspected Fluttershy. Ooh, civilization, yes. They'll definitely have a spa there. Wait, hang on. How does an anthro shark go about? I mean, how does he breathe? Sharks have to swim in water constantly. They can never sleep and oh my gosh, why am I even asking this question? Okay, I know he's singing about I'm your friend, but somehow all I'm hearing is trust in me, trust in me. And, and the, the award for, for fastest, fastest heal the face turn, turn goes to Cap of the, the cat. cat. Wow, Tempest has really good eyes and a nose to spot Pinky's hair. 
Off they go into the wild blue yonder. There goes Pinky. She's gonna crash. Nice save, Twilight. Pirates? That's what happened to this movie when someone leaked it online early. Saved by the power of budgeted time. Twilight, they were about to throw you overboard. Don't complain about a musical number now. Dang it, Rainbow. No showboating. How many falls is that this movie? They really need insurance. Oh, Rarity, even when you fall, you look fabulous. Well, this won't end well. Well, I guess I won't need that playset. Okay, that city is awesome, but I'm feeling kind of bummed here. Ain't no hippogriffs in sight. Well, look on the bright side, ladies. This is still a more dignified scene than Men in Black 2. Hello, merponies. Please do not sing shooby-doo, shoop shoo be doo I never thought I'd witness a contender for crazier than Pinkie Pie, but here we are. Actually, yeah, can you imagine if equestrians all turned themselves into dragons? They could call kinds of booty. Wow. What would Celestia say if she knew the one hope she entrusted would just say, sorry, we're too busy? Okay, seriously, calling for a hippogriff coup? Who's with me? Huh? Huh? Who's with me? What is a conga line like underwater? Oh, the power of true 3D movement. Oh, ho, Grand Theft Twilight. You know, I'm betting that a lot of people are going to debate how Twilight is presented in this movie. I mean, she made a huge and terrible mistake. And you might say, well, she's the princess of friendship. She shouldn't have done that at all. But I'm going to put this forth here. Twilight has witnessed some truly horrific events in the last couple days. She's seen her three mentors turned to stone and her home ransacked. She feels this terrible responsibility, and she's making the mistake of assuming that she is the model princess who would know how to solve the problem and would know how to fix everything real easy. That's the ideal, but she's not taking to the fact that she is a fallible character. And someone like Queen Novo, she's only thinking about her own people. So she definitely made a mistake, but for understandable reasons. And given the pressure and that her friends haven't exactly been as strong a links as they were in the premiere of Friendship is Magic, I can understand why she's losing her cool. Oh, but Weepy Twilight makes me sad. And Kidnap Twilight makes me worried. Oh, the guys who were implied to be dead are totally not dead. Who knew? Wow, AJ, you saw right through his confidence booster. Way to be a downer. Okay, I really enjoy Tempest's character. We don't know a lot about her, unless you maybe read uh, the story we wrote to Canterlot or any of the preview comics. But she is a great contrast against Twilight, someone who suffered a blow and assumed that's the way the world works, which is something we all tend to assume. It's tempting to define the world only by the bad, because we think that will prepare ourselves, when really, I think it closes us off to possibilities and options, which is why Tempest is in the wrong here. Put simply, I don't trust people who assume they know the way the world works, because usually they only understand half the world. Look, I'm just gonna say it, this whole staring thing with Songbird would mean more if I could actually see her eyes. Why would you design a character without eyes at Oh my goodness! Well, shows how much I know about Sia. Ah, our head baddie, the Yeti. You know, as much as the Storm King isn't really a big part of this movie, he's only been in one scene and now here at the climax, I do like that he's not a threat from a thousand years ago. That well has been tapped pretty often, and uh, truthfully, I'm starting to wonder if the modern era has anything to offer. So, we've had Starlight Glimmer and the Storm King. What could be next, I wonder? Okay, dude, you just set up a defeat flag. You freed your prisoner through the most violent means possible. Oh, wow, the calendar system is going to have a mess with this. So, Grubber's sole contribution to this story has been to detect the pirates in a cake. You know, I never understood this character when I was a kid. Now I get that a small, comical member of the villains helps keep them from being too intimidating for young kids. But even as a child, I wondered why the head villains would keep someone like this around. Okay, now it's time for the comedic fight. Let the fun begin. Yes, poking them in the tushes. Cupcake assault. Fluttershy, getting them in touch with their feelings. Oh, she's so adorable. Lighting them on fire? What the hey? Okay, group hug later. Save the world now. How is it that in every My Little Pony story, the ultimate climax comes down to a game of keep away? Have you accepted Twilight Sparkle as your savior? I mean, just look at her. Oh, Tempest taking one for the team, just like a certain cross-eyed mayor heroine. And all is fixed, wow. Although, I guess the Cantalot contractors are out of a deal. She is a wonderful singer, but I feel like this song is too somber for the end of a celebration where you save the world. Looking for a little bit more energy here. Wow, they invade your home and enslave your people and you still allow them in at the party. Pony forgiveness knows no bounds. And you put the shattered remains of your opponent up on display at this celebration. Pony depravity knows no bounds. Oh yeah, go Tempest. It's your birthday, but not really. Okay, Queen Novo, let's be fair here. Twilight tried to steal from you, but you basically said to Celestia and country, sucks to be you. So uh, let's call it even and make with the apologies all around, please. 
Well, that was a lot of fun. It had a lot of the staples of My Little Pony. There's very swift resolution, a pretty much instant forgiveness for those who have done wrong, and no grudges, because I guess the ponies just aren't hardwired that way. Unless you act mildly unfriendly, and then suddenly you're tricksy and ostracized. I don't get it. But it had a great adventure. It moved very fast. You're never at one point for too long. I made the comparison before this movie came out. It might face the same challenges as the Transformers movie. Well, much like the Transformers movie, it never wants its audience to settle in just one place for too long. It dashes off from one to the next, and as a result, it can feel like we're bouncing too much between places. And the wealth of celebrity voice acting talent really spreads the focus around, so we don't get to know anyone besides Tempest that well. But I will say this, Tempest was a very strong foil to Twilight, as was Queen Novo. You have Tempest on one side, who is looking only after herself, who is completely egocentric. And then you have Queen Novo, who is also selfish, but selfish for her people. And here's Twilight, torn between friendship with her closest members and completing a mission on her own, but also looking after Pony Kind and what is she willing to sacrifice to make that happen, including others. I think Twilight comes out of the story looking very dynamic. She erred, she stumbled, but in the end she triumphed and became a stronger person for it. Also, I am so pleased to see Hippogriffs a part of the canon. You know, some folks are asking me, are you going to change your OC now that Hippogriffs are a part of the show and their design is much different? And I will say first and foremost, props to the staff for designing such unique characters. I read in the art book for this movie that they really wanted to make characters that look nothing like other fantasy, and they changed up the Hippogriff look very nicely to match this. However, I'm very fond of this OC. I'm fond of the work I put into it. I've worked with this character for several years. I have no intention of changing it just because the movie has come along. I am simply another breed of Hippogriff. A crazy kind of Hippogriff. A bizarro griff, if you will. But I'd recommend this movie, and I encourage everyone to support this financially. Vote with your wallet and let people know that you enjoy these movies, and hopefully we'll get more. But all in all, I consider this fun. I understand if people who are not fans of the show will feel lost. As I said, Hanazuki at the beginning gave me some perspective on how an outsider might feel looking in. I hope that parents and their kids can all enjoy this movie, and I look forward to more My Little Pony stories to come. I'm Silver Quill. Thanks for reacting.